Hello my darlings, I hope you're doing very well in today's video. I'm going to be talking about Kat Von D, just a whole timeline of who she is, what she's known for, what she's done in the past and how problematic she has been in the past. I'm sure a lot of you are aware of who she is or what she's done in the past or no little tidbits here and there, but this video is basically going to be a whole five course meal of everything she's done. We've got layers to this and everything. But I guess most of my audience will know Kat Von D as the tattoo artist. I mainly make videos about tattoos, so I'd imagine you guys know her for being a tattoo artist. She was in uh, two tattoo related TV shows called Miami Inc and LA Inc. Some people may know her just for her makeup brand and the drama that she had with Jeffree Star, or maybe her just being an anti-vaxxer, or her recent behavior that hasn't really been talked about that much, especially like on YouTube and stuff. It has been talked about on Instagram, throughout some tattoo artists. You might've seen some of this go about. It was talked about on Twitter also, but it was basically Kat Von D defending a tattoo artist that works at her uh, tattoo studio High Voltage, which is in LA, in California, in America. <laughs> um, but this tattoo artist said that he doesn't tattoo dark skin tones and she kind of defended that. And there was a, there's a whole list of things we need to talk about today, trust me. So let's do a quick rundown of who Kat Von D is. Kat Von D is 38 years old. She was born in Mexico, but she moved to California when she was younger. She's an artist, a tattoo artist, a musician, a makeup artist, a businesswoman, and a TV personality. There's just a whole array of things that she does. She is completely sober after struggling with addiction for a part of her life. She's also vegan. She's been married twice now. She was married to a tattoo artist and celebrity, I guess, called Oliver Peck. She's now married to someone called Rafael Reyes. Uh, they got married in 2018 and they have one child together. Raphael, on his own right, is problematic and we'll get to that as well. Trust me, we'll get into absolutely everything. <laughs> so let me just quickly talk about like my history with Kat. Not that I've ever spoken to her or anything like that, but I will put my hands up and admit that I used to be a huge Kat Von D fan. Oh my God. I first saw her on an episode of Miami Inc. And we in the UK got it kind of late. So I don't know when the first time I saw an episode of Miami Inc. was. I think I was 18, which is 2008 but she had left by then. Back in those days, the UK really didn't get American TV shows on time. We always got it a little bit late and what have you. But I remember seeing Kat in the show and being like, oh my God, she is just like gorgeous. She is stunning. I just think she's awesome and just who she is. I just thought she was great, right? So I watched like all of Miami Inc and then she was on LA Inc and I watched all of that and I bought all of her three books. I still have them. They're not at the house that I'm at now. They're at my older house with my sister. But yeah, I like supported her and I just like, I just thought she was such an inspiration and just someone to look up to. I, you know, she was one of the, like the most heavily tattooed women I'd ever seen and I was like, oh my god, I want to look like her. Like, she's beautiful. And and I think a lot of us had that opinion of her. You know, she seemed like a talented artist, a makeup artist. Like we all kind of were attracted to her and how different she was from everyone else in the beauty industry. And I was, like a lot of people, completely unaware of everything that she had done. I think I kind of caught on to what she had done um, you know, back when she was in like Miami Inc. Like we'll talk about it, but I didn't really know any of it until about four, five years ago, maybe. I was just like, I guess, blissfully unaware. I just had no idea. I never saw anything. Let's dive into this. Let's do a timeline of her bullshit. <laughs> she was married to Oliver Peck. Not a lot of people know this. Well, it's not like a huge thing that's ever been talked about, I guess. But yeah, she was married to him from 2003 to 2007. You may know Oliver Peck um, from Ink Master. He's one of like the judges on there. He was in it from beginning to end, but he's also been tattooing for a very long time. But yeah, Ink Master, if you don't know, it was a tattoo competition show and it actually got like a lot of, well, for the most part, a lot of people did like it, even people within the industry, but then it becomes so filled with drama and it just become just, like I'm, I'm not gonna lie, I used to watch it. I did watch at least three or four seasons of it. But then like it got to, like it, it started to get a real feel of like reality TV. Like it was more about the drama than the actual tattooing. And I, it just, that put me off completely. I don't like dramatized TV shows, especially when it comes to tattooing. Sorry if my camera keeps moving by the way, it's on my desk and oh. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, it, it's a very drama fueled. The show itself was pretty problematic. So like a long story short, um, the contestants of the show, I don't know, I can't remember how many like Tashi Wattis would be in this, but they basically would, it's like a competition show, like American Top Model, um, Hell's Kitchen, that kind of thing, right? And you have like, I don't know, like 10 or 12 Tashi Wattis as, you know, contestants. And they do a challenge at the beginning and then whoever won that challenge got to assign clients to the people in the competition. They would use clients to kind of weaponize them, if that makes sense. So it was very well known for using dark skin tones as like a weapon. If someone won the challenge, wanted to kind of screw someone over, they would be like, okay, I'm going to sign you this client, or they called it canvases. Um, I'm going to sign you this canvas, and this canvas would have darker skin tone, and with tattooing darker skin tones, there's a way to like sort of finesse it and make it work, right? And um, a lot of people are too lazy to figure that out. <laughs> so that's how they would screw each other over, by using someone's skin tone. It just like the whole show just leaves a bad taste in my mouth now, honestly. So moving back to Oliver Peck, last year some photos come out of him doing blackface, or like black body, like there was browny black paint all over his skin so he's kind of doing like blackface and apparently there's also a photo of him in blackface and then he has like the letter letter n painted on his chest i'm sure we can imagine what that stood for and apparently he had done this multiple times throughout his lifetime so he has a history of racism and i'm assuming that cat knew about his you know racist past or his racist ways about life and you're probably thinking well okay like she was married to this guy doesn't mean she you know she's a part of it she control you can't control who you're married to you can't sort of say what your partner can do or not do or whatever um so you can kind of put that into account but when we look at her partners over the years which we will do there's a pattern and it's kind of like okay one time you know it's like oh okay like that's a bit fucking weird but whatever but there's too many instances where you're like okay cat maybe has the same views as her partners. Okay, so let's move on to Miami Ink. This is kind of where Kat got her name, her fame, and was out in the world. Kat starred in a reality TV show called Miami Ink. It was basically about a tattoo studio in Miami and about the tattoo artists, how the studios run, about the clients that get tattooed there. It was kind of interesting. Again, there was like drama involved here and there, but like what reality TV show doesn't have drama? For the most part, it wasn't all that bad, I would say. Like, it could have been a lot worse. Kat was on the TV show from 2005 to 2006. She had a pretty short run on the TV show because she had a falling out with the owner of the tattoo studio, which is Army James. Army was born in Sharm El Sheikh, which is in Egypt, but at the time that he was born there, it was a part of Israel. Army is Jewish. When Kat left Miami Inc., well, I think she was kind of like asked to leave kind of thing, because she did have a falling out with Army James, but when she left, she left a note for Army saying, burn in hell, Jew bag. It was like a photo of her, and it was like signed by her kind of thing. It also had the Star of David on it, but it was like in flames and also a swastika. There was a speculation whether Kat did this or not. She still to this day denies that she ever did it, but handwriting specialists have looked at it and her handwriting sort of matched it up, looked at it, done, you know, scientific things with it and just had a good old look at it. And they can confirm they're like 99% sure that Kat did do it, but she still to this day says, no, I didn't do it. It was got nothing to do with me. TLC, which is the production company or the channel that Miami Inc was on, that were aware of what happened and they said they would like look into it and stuff instead of like taking action and sort of holding cat accountable they instead try to bury it as much as possible and then they gave cat her own tv show <laughs> <laughs> she was kind of rewarded for being a dick basically and yeah I think that's why I never heard of it because it was buried uh, for the most part but whew, not good so let's move on to LA Inc again LA Inc was exactly like Miami Inc but this time it was about Kat Von D's uh, tattoo studio called High Voltage which is in LA she still has that studio it's still going strong the series was on from 2007 to 2011 we good Siri? Okay, with LA Inc, I feel like it was a bit more drama filled again. The like first few seasons weren't that bad, like they could have been worse, but they, you know, yeah. As it went on, it was more and more drama filled, and then Kat Von D was having fights with other tattoo artists 
and it was just all a bit, you know. But again, when I was a fan, I would just, I just watched it for Cat. Cat kind of had this attitude of it was either her way or no other way. It was like you do things my way, or you know, you can get out kind of thing. <laughs> While they were filming Ellie Inc, I remember she dated uh, Nikki Six and Jesse James. Jesse James himself is super problematic. Like he has an anti-Semitic past, which I know, shock horror. He's been known to do Nazi salutes and wear Nazi clothing. I think they were together as a whole for like a year and a half. I think they like broke up briefly and got back together but yeah they were together for about a year and a half so yeah as you can see there's another problematic partner that she has had we had oliver peck and then jesse james let's move on to her beauty brand this kind of section of this video is kind of just like i'm covering it because you know it's relevant to who kat von d is but it's not really related to my content but i feel like if i miss it out There'll be questions like, what about this? <laughs> While Kat was filming LA Inc, she, she was in talks with Sephora and that's how a makeup brand was created. And it hit off extremely well. It was known for being colorful. The packaging was beautiful. She had this team of girls working for her that always had the most beautiful makeup ever. It was like a completely breath of fresh air for the beauty industry because um, it was just so colorful. <laughs> like her liquid lipsticks, you, there was so many different colours and everyone was like, oh my god, it was just, you know, like YouTube was going crazy for it, like all the beauty vloggers and all of that, they were just going nuts for it and it did very, very well and yeah, it became a cold favourite. Yeah, it expanded and then it became worldwide so it was sold in many, many countries and many stores. I remember when it come here to the UK, it was a little bit later than when it would come out in the um, US but I remember it opened in Debenhams in London on Oxford Street and I was like oh my god I've got to go see it I've got to go see it like I was just like <gasps> so excited and she had this tattoo liner which was again a huge cult favorite everyone was like obsessed with it I personally didn't like it <laughs> I I heard everyone say oh my god it's so waterproof it's smudge proof it never comes off and I was like oh my god I need some of that and it come off so easy for me I don't know it just did not sit right for me at all but yeah there was a huge fan base for her makeup and she was known to a lot of people as the makeup girl not many people knew of her tattoo artistry past so of course as this is cat her makeup brand obviously become problematic in some way like there had to be some way that um she would make it problematic she named a liquid lipstick selection which is basically a nazi term for a selection of prisoners to be executed in concentration camps after the you know backlash of course there would be um she renamed it beloved now as you see there's kind of a pattern happening here. She's got an anti-Semitic past with the Army James thing. She's dated Jesse James, who is anti-Semitic or had done anti-Semitic things. And then there's this. So there's like a little pattern going on here. Also with her makeup brand, she had a lipstick called Celebutard, which obviously is a spin on a very horrible word, um, which I'm not gonna say, but I'm sure you can figure out what it is um so she so she had a huge backlash over that because it's such a derogatory term and a lot of people were very upset about it rightfully so okay so while we're talking about makeup i guess we better talk about jeffree star <laughs> she obviously had a huge fight uh, a public fight a public falling out whatever you want to call it with jeffree star and now cat and jeffree star had been friends for a long time a very long time jeffree star has got some tattoos done by Kat and they, you know, they were seen out publicly. She, he was on LA Inc and all of that, you know, they were good friends. Kat also had a lipstick name after him, which is just Jeffrey. It was, I think it was like a bright pink color. But basically what happened in July of 2016, I was like doing research for this video. I could not believe that this happened in 2016. I thought it was like two years ago. Like it's crazy, but in July, 2016, uh, Kat Von D uploaded a video to YouTube kind of saying that she's not friends with Jeffree Star anymore She doesn't want to be associated with Jeffree Star anymore She accused him of not paying one of her friends who did like logos for his uh, brand Branding logos for his makeup brand and she basically just didn't want to be associated with him because he's a bully and racist And it's all a bit like a little bit ironic <laughs> and um, for sure Jeffree does have a 
awful past. I'm sure some of you guys are aware of it. If not, there are plenty of videos on YouTube that you can watch which discusses all of the problematic things he has done in the past. Um, I think it was like one of the first biggest beauty dramas, tea spilling things that had ever happened on YouTube. I think, I don't know, it's not really my realm, <laughs> the whole beauty drama thing, like I don't know, but it, it blew up, like it was pretty, uh, pretty massive. <laughs> So in January last year, Kat Von D decided to step away from her beauty brand and sell her shares within her beauty brand and that she kind of just didn't want to be associated with it anymore. It is now just called KBD Vegan Beauty. Many people kind of speculated that she was kind of forced out of it because of all of her problematic past because the sales had started to drop dramatically because of, you know, people were making videos exposing Kat Von D and what she had done in the past and all this stuff with Jeffree Star and she was kind of cancelled in a way kind of thing and there was um, stuff about her anti-vax views which I would talk about in a moment. It was kind of like people were kind of not buying it anymore and she kind of stepped away. So some people were saying that she was kind of pushed out of the way. Some people kind of just took her word for it because she said she wanted to leave doing beauty and focus on her son and her music and being an artist and stuff like that. So it's up to you whether you feel that she was pushed <laughs> or she walked. So let's talk about Kat's current husband. So Kurt's husband's name is Raphael Reyes, or he's also known as Leif, Leif I've got it written down here, <laughs> Leifa Sayer. Um, he's an author, an artist, and a musician. And Raphael himself is, you guessed it, problematic. There's a YouTuber called Ready to Glare. She did an amazing video about him and his daughter. He has a daughter from a previous relationship. I'll leave a link to Ready to Glare's video down below, by the way. Allegedly, his daughter had sex with some of his friends, which he felt completely betrayed by, which, okay, sure, I guess. <laughs> um, but he was more upset about the fact that she'd done this, not by the fact that his friends were much older than his daughter. He said, there was this thing about him saying like his daughter was of age, but it turns out his daughter could have been about 14 years old. So the people that she might've had sex with, she wasn't at a consented age. So it kind of is counted as rape. And Kat come in of course to defend Raphael and pretty much against Ready to Glare's video and she said no one got raped like there's a screenshot of her saying no one got raped but if the daughter was underage <laughs> I mean it doesn't take a scientist to work it out right so she defended her husband and they, again they were it was all about the betrayal and not how his daughter was doing and you know the, the seriousness of what the situation was. Raphael also has a swastika uh, tattoo on his neck. He said he's come out and said it's not a political one It's not the swastika. It's actually a Buddhism symbol. I don't know. We can take his word for it Obviously, we can say okay. Yeah, sure. We'll give you the benefit of the doubt There's a lot of people that have said that like that have got you know swastika Tattoo, but then they've retracted and been like oh no 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 this is like a Buddhism symbol <sighs> Again, you guys can determine whether you believe what he's saying or not again it's all a bit fishy. So let's go on to the anti-vax situation of Kat Von D. I'm sure most of you are aware of this. This story went absolutely viral. It was like main news media were making articles about this. It was just, there was just an uproar about this whole thing. But in June 2018, while Kat was pregnant with her child, Kat made a post saying that she wasn't gonna be vaccinating her child. And the main reason why people are sort of anti-vaxxers or won't vaccinate their infants or children is because there's, there was this, <laughs> old study done by a guy called Andrew Wakefield and some other people, but he was kind of like the main face of it kind of thing. And he said that there is a correlation between vaccinations and autism and other illnesses and diseases. So a lot of people took that as gospel and decided to stop vaccinating their children. And there was really not much to back it up. And then scientists really got hold of this and tried to find a link and they could never find a link. Again, this is like long story short kind of deal. But after many years of studies, like no, there was no correlation there at all. So, you know, 
people are like, what the motherfuck is going on here? And in the end, Andrew actually lost his medical license. He's now, you know, a preachy anti-vaxxer. So, you know, whatever, I'll just get in the bin. But most people were outraged at what Cap had said. And um, she kind of kept quiet about it for a while. Um, a rare few amount of people did support her and said, well, you know, mummy shaming, um, it's her child, her choice, but you're not just affecting your child, you're affecting other people and what have you. In March 2019, Kat uploaded a video to YouTube called, I'm not a Nazi, I am not anti-vax. <laughs> what a title. <laughs> The video is 11 minutes long and she pretty much discusses the way that she thinks she's not a Nazi and she's not anti-Semitic and that she actually has chosen to have her child vaccinated. She was just misinformed before, you know, giving birth to a child or whatever. She didn't really look into it that much. I guess all the backlash kind of talked some sense into her. Okay, so I've got notes here, obviously in front of me, and it says um, extras. So this is just like little extra tidbits here and there that I didn't really know where to put in a video. And one of the things that she has done in the past is she's, she's vegan, she's, you know, out and proud of being vegan and stuff, which is totally fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. But she, in the past, has compared the meat industry to the Holocaust, <laughs> which I know the meat industry is not that great, but the Holocaust, really, really, uh, so, but that's another, you know, thing pointing towards the fact that she is anti-Semitic or possibly anti-Semitic. She denies it, but another thing that she did with her beauty brand, her beauty brand Instagram. So I don't know if Kat actually controlled that at all, but it did have her, you know, Kat Von D Beauty um, username. So she's kind of like the face of the brand and it's kind of, you know, has to, something to do with her. But basically the Instagram for her makeup line posted a picture of a hand holding a concealer in front of a cotton field. And the caption says, let Locket Concealer do all the hard work for you. That <laughs> how tone deaf must you be? Like how unaware must one be to think that that was okay? <laughs> I tweeted out saying that I was gonna do this video and I got a lot of feedback saying, you know, oh yeah, do the video. And I had one comment from one of my favorite tattoo artists, Paula Castle, who I'm actually wearing a t-shirt today. It says, doggos, not dick pics. Amazing, she's a great artist. I've been tattooed by her. She's just the best. Um, but Paula left a tweet saying, don't forget how badly she treats her cats. And then someone replied saying, of course she treats her cats badly. Why, I am not surprised. Yeah, she's just hella problematic all round. I, I'm not sure on that situation. I couldn't really find anything about that, to be honest, when I'm doing research. I'm not sure what that is about. Maybe some of you guys will know some information. If you guys have anything to add, by the way, just comment down below in case I've missed something out here. I think I've covered most bases, but you never know. Um, so now let's move on to recent events. And this is the reason why I'm kind of making this video. I was kind of, it's one of those things I wanted to make a video about Kat, but I was just like, it's not really my place to say anything. She hasn't really been known as a tattoo artist for that long. Like she, I think she still tattoos, but she's mainly now known for just like, being problematic in makeup, I guess. But um, this is tattoo related, so a lot of you guys are probably gonna be like, oh! I saw this on Instagram a few days ago, and I think I saw a tweet about someone saying, you know, Kat Von D's being racist within tattooing, and I was like, oh, what's going on here? So I did some digging and I found some information. Ended up stumbling across this tattoo artist on Instagram, who goes by the name of Softpoint. Their name is also Kat, but to com to avoid confusion, I'm just gonna say their name, their Instagram name, so we kind of don't get so confused because I'm bad at explaining things anyway. <laughs> so even I'm gonna get confused. So I'm just gonna say Soft Point. But Soft Point on their Instagram has a one of those highlight reels, you know, on the pages, and then underneath like the bio, there's like highlight reels that you can have there. It's kind of like stories that last forever instead of them disappearing after 24 hours. But they have one called Tattoo Bullshit, so if you wanna look at this in full depth, again, I'll leave links down below so you can have a look at it. But this basically highlights Kat Von D and a tattoo artist by the name of Camille, who works at Kat Von D's High Voltage Tattoo Studio. And um, what 
started this whole thing was Camille answered one of those questions on Instagram. You know, the Instagram stories, someone asked, do you tattoo darker skin? To which he replied, I wish, unfortunately, my style, technique, and ink sets I am using, they don't look good on darker skin tone. Camille is a realism colour tattoo artist, not that it matters, but just letting you guys know. I've done a few videos on this, but there is a huge issue in the tattoo industry when it comes to tattooing darker skin tones. A lot of tattoo artists refuse to tattoo darker skin tones or kind of refuse to learn how to tattoo darker skin tones. The reason why there's this issue is the more melanin a person has in their skin, the more colour theory a tattoo artist would have to do to get certain colours and shading to show up properly when the tattoo is healed. So it just takes a little bit longer to kind of figure out what a tattoo artist has to do. They have to look at the person's skin tone to see what undertones the person has also. So for example, if a client has darker skin tone with an orange undertone, you wouldn't really want to use many blue shades because orange neutralizes blue. It's all like color theory. So if you look at the color wheel, blue is opposite orange. So they mush them together and they kind of neutralize each other. So you wouldn't want to use too many blues because it wouldn't show up that great. But there would be other colors that this person could have. It can be done, it can be done extremely well by artists that have taken the time to learn the technique, learn the colour wheel, colour theory and all of that and you can get some gorgeous vibrant tattoos on darker skin tones. It can be done. There's evidence out there. So anyone that says different, oh, they're just lazy. So Softpoint actually reached out to Camille um, through Instagram messages and uh, Softpoint said, hey, this is actually not an okay response. Your inability to tattoo dark skin and refusal to do so, don't look good on dark skin, is racist and can and contributes to racism in the industry. Happy to talk further about this. Please message me back as it's important. Thank you. So a nice polite message to say, hey, like, let's discuss this, you know, like, let's make a change. You know, <laughs> to make a change, you've got to educate, you've got to make awareness for the whole situation. So soft point message politely, there was no rudeness there. It wasn't standoffish. It wasn't like, hey, like you're a dickhead. Like, oh my God, how can you fucking say something like this? It was more of a, hey, like, let's talk about this. You know, like you're spreading misinformation. Here. Like, let's change this. But then obviously Camille, I'm sure we can all get the vibe of how Camille is. He gave a petty response by blocking soft point and instead of just, you know, ignoring it maybe, which again would have been rude, but not as rude as what he did do, which was basically put soft points message on his Instagram stories and then wrote, just look at this racist. I give you a simple answer why my techniques and style won't work on the darker skin. And of course you had to bring this bullshit. Clearly you don't know nothing about the art of tattooing. So zip, smiley face emoji. Not, no apprenticeship here. I'm not a tattoo artist. Yeah, I know a lot more than this dude by the looks of things. Cause I know it's all about color theory, color wheel, figuring out how a client's skin is. This dude is lazy as fuck. Let's be honest here, right? No lie, that it can be done. So with Camille putting this into his Instagram stories, Softpoint then got a lot of hate from people, a lot of messages from people, you know, trying to defend Camille or whatever, I don't know, blind rage, I guess. Softpoint also posted some screenshots of a conversation between another tattoo artist by the name of Cutty, Cutty Beige? Cutty Bag? And Kat Von D, so Cutty Beige bag, reached out to Kat Von T about the whole Camille situation and this is kind of how it went. <laughs> I don't usually reply to posts like this but I noticed you are a tattooer, I think that's, but I noticed. And I feel compelled to tell you that your response to Camille's honest answer is totally out of line and simply unethical. <laughs> I mean, could, shall we talk about unethicalness, Kat? As a tattooer, it's our responsibility to be honest with our clients when something is out of our control and we'll guarantee an outcome that our clients will be unhappy. The truth is, depending on how much melanin concentration the client has, will depend on what pigments will show up properly, which is true. And as a tattooer, you should know this. It would be extremely unethical to promise people with darker tones that pigments will heal properly, look the same as if they were tattooed on lighter skin tone while taking their money. This has nothing to do with racism and everything to do with being professional. And as a tattooer, it makes no sense that you would shame Camille for being professionally and ethically honest. What she's saying is true. 
like I have said, there's different ways you've got to tattoo darker skin tones, without a doubt. But that doesn't mean you turn away someone. It basically means you take the client and say, hey, this is a situation. We're gonna have to do things a little bit differently here, but I will tattoo you and I will make sure it works. I will make sure I use a color palette that will work for your skin tone. You don't just say, no, I don't tattoo darker skin tones, because that means you're excluding a huge amount of people. Not everyone can be pale like me, right? I am the whitest of the white. You can't expect all your clients to have skin that looks like an A4 white piece of paper. So then Cutty replied, helping guide customers on what would look best is absolutely our job. And I respect honesty and guidance. However, refusing to work on darker skin tones is absolutely a choice he is making to not accommodate to a certain group of people. He is obviously a talented tattooer, so there's no reason he can't adapt his style to accommodate darker skin tones. As a business owner, I understand you defending him, but I would encourage you to help your employees understand how to accommodate people of all races. And then Kat replied, what are you talking about? We are tattooers. You're telling me you have never turned someone away for not being the right artist for the job and took their money to accommodate. I hope you reassess your work ethic. And no, I'm not defending Camille because I'm a business owner. I'm calling you out because you are incredibly wrong. I wish you well and I hope you get a grip on reality. And then Cutty replied, I've turned people away for not being the right artist for the job, but I have never turned someone away for having dark skin. I've learned how to tattoo my style on all different types of skin because I love my craft and I think learning how to accommodate people with every color skin is an important step towards being anti-racist. But I guess that's not something that interests you. I hope you reassess your work ethic as well. Boom, damn. You can turn away someone because you can't do that style of work maybe. So say I went to a traditional tattoo artist who specializes just in traditional and said, hey, I would really love a realistic portrait of Princess Diane. I would expect them to turn me away because, you know, that's not what they specialise in. Turning someone away because of their skin tone is flat out racism. It's not up for discussion. But once this had all come out and I guess it started to work its way to people that weren't really in the tattoo industry and people were like, what, what's going on here kind of thing. Um, Kat Von D uploaded a video to Instagram TV, pretty much publicly defending Camille and says that his actions aren't racist. Shockingly, a lot of people agreed with Kat. I'm like, yeah, like what the hell? Like, this is not racist, like, he's just doing his job. And I guess people kind of took Kat's side of view. Actually, I'm not guessing, I know. People took Kat's point of view because Kat is a professional. I, mean, I don't know why I'm doing quotes because she is a professional, tattoo-wise, but she's a professional and she has a huge following. So when people see a professional with a huge following, they, a lot of people that don't know otherwise will take their word for it. I've seen this a lot with celebrity tattoo artists. People just, you know, cult follow, it's so weird. Um, but she basically said, you know, it's science, she can't change science, and there's nothing that her and other tattoo artists can do about it. And to me, that is just plain lazy. It's super freaking lazy. And it's super disheartening to those with darker skin tones. Imagine, you know, you've looked up to, say, Kat Von D or Camille or any other tattoo artist that has come out and said, hey, I can't tattoo your skin tone, you're too dark for me. That's awful. A lot of people were crediting Kat and Camille and other people that were saying, you know, what they're saying is right for just being honest. And they were saying, you know, like I'd much rather have a tattoo artist tell me the truth than lie to me and I get a dodgy tattoo. Which, you know, again, I get, like I'd much rather a tattoo artist be truthful to me, but for other reasons. It shouldn't stop at, hey, I know I can't tattoo you because of your skin tone, it should, be a conversation, it should be a, okay, hi, um, yeah, you have darker skin tones and I have a colorful color palette normally, but because of your dark skin tone, um, we're gonna have to sort of work around this, so there's gonna be some colors that are gonna work for you, some colors that are not gonna work for you, but we're gonna work on this and make sure we get the best tattoo for you possible. It's honestly just so easy to learn color theory and a color will. If a simpleton like me who has never tattooed, can figure it out and work it out and you know do research on it. A professional that gets paid to tattoo should bloody well know how to do it right out the bat. You know you may not learn it in an apprenticeship which I kind of believe you should learn how to tattoo all skin tones in an apprenticeship but maybe you know for the mentor isn't you know 
educated in that you should take time to learn it yourself what you can do also i've seen and talked about this before is uh, tattoo artists can tattoo rainbow dots onto a darker skin tone client to figure out what colors would work better for them you can either have it on your wrist or just somewhere on your body that can be easily hidden so an artist can sort of go out of the way and do something like that if you if the client wants that obviously you know there's so many ways you can you can do this <laughs> this whole thing is just lazy racist and it just puts a very bad taste in my mouth and especially if we look back at everything else Kat has done it's not one of those like misspeak situations where she's been like oh, whatever you know she has a whole history of being horrible to people that are I guess different from her but yeah like I said if I've missed anything out here just comment down below um if you've got any information about anything comment down below links and all of that fun stuff um but yeah i'm gonna leave it here for this video <laughs> that has been enough cut up 1d for one day i believe until my next video bye <laughs>